All right. So today we're going to learn how we can go from a static illustration that's very low detail, similar to the one that I have here, and how we can use Leonardo and Photoshop together to composite an image that's pretty close to what a 3D rendering would look like. So let's begin. All right. So the first step is logging into Leonardo.ai. Once you're inside, you'll want to click on the option that says Image Generation. Once that page loads, you'll see a sidebar on the left that popped up. So from here, we're going to select a couple options. And this is just my approach. Feel free to experiment for number of images. I'm going to set that to three. For photo reel, uh, I keep that off. Alchemy, I will need that because I want to choose a 3D render style. Transparency, I'm going to keep that off. Don't need that. Public images, um, private, really up to you. You can you can choose whichever one. It doesn't really affect the final result. That's just your preference. For input dimensions, let me set that to 2, 3. So 512 by 768. Got in scale 7. I think that's good. Now we'll go over here to the middle of the page. Under the AI image generation, you'll type your prompt. And my approach is using a prompt that's describing the character that I want to see rendered. So in this scenario, I'm going to type in Werewolf Robot Mech, 3D render. I inputted the colors like black, white, gray, red accents um, for the battle armor and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I want to switch the different model that I'm still, that I'm using. I want this to be 3D animation style. Okay. That said, instead of dynamic, I want to set this to 3D render. You can add elements. Um, I don't need to. And we'll see if we need to add any negative prompts, though I don't think we will. Okay, so now we can go below. So you'll see three tabs here. It defaults to the generation history. But um, well, let's go over to image guidance. Right now it's currently set to off. Let's toggle that on. Okay, so I kept my previous image, but let me just delete this. So there you go. This is what it would normally look like if you have no images uploaded. So once you switch over to image guidance, you'll click on add an image to get started. You'll be able to upload an image or just click and drag an image. But this is the image that I've already uploaded, so it's easy for me to just click on here and I'll be able to confirm that's the image I want to use. All right, perfect. Now there's one more thing I usually play around with and that's the strength. I start off at 0.54 and I'll play around with that, seeing if I need to add more or less. Uh, once I see my generations, I think from here it's good. I can just click on generate it. We'll see what happens. Okay, so that's processing. If you notice now I have a one that shows up next to my generation history. So I'll toggle back to that tab. And there we go. And those are the images that it's populated. Now I usually like to play around Let's see, let's maybe set this to 0.58 and I'll generate again. So the way that I like to approach it is I like to create a handful of images in Leonardo. Then I'm going to take bits and pieces and then in Photoshop, I'm going to construct them and put them together like Voltron uh, to create the most accurate version um, of the image. Okay, it's populated a couple more versions of it at 0.58. Now let's see if maybe I go down to 0.56. And while it's generating, maybe we can take a look at the images that it's already created for me. And from here, there's some pretty good options, like in this one here in the middle. I'm also liking here this one on the bottom left. Bottom right image also has some good elements. And looking at the anatomy, it's pretty accurate. Um, I like the way that, you know, the calves and the, the legs are shaped. 
And that's pretty similar to the way that we had it in the, the art illustration. Um, it's added some extra elements. And that's why the next step is going into Photoshop and just kind of cleaning that up. And we'll scroll up. There we go. And with this, I'll start the download process. So downloading images, it's really easy. Just hover over the option and just click download image. Download that. Like this one as well. So I'll download that. Download this one. Sure. Download that also. And that, I, th I think with that, we have plenty of options now to jump into Photoshop and start our Voltron, Voltron process. All right, so now I've jumped over here to Photoshop. Uh, I've opened up the original sketch. So I want to use this as reference. I've also picked out three, three of the images we downloaded from Leonardo. Just this one, this one, and this one. And then I started to, if you notice, there's... Um, some uh, selections already made. So I started to determine what elements that I want to keep from these images to splice together. So after looking at all three, I determined that this is my favorite when it came to the shoulder pads, the body structure. Um, there's some things that I want to change. Um, that plate in the middle of his body, that's not really something that you know I'm really digging. Also his face structure, well, it's wolf-like. It's maybe a little more dog-like to me than I really wanted to uh, have in my render. And I feel this is a lot closer to an actual wolf. I, I also really like that eye patch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection. So first right here, if you notice, I have the rectangle marquee, which is also shortcut M. And I'm able to click and drag the section that I want to copy. So I'm going to press Command C. You can also go to edit and then copy. Then I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to paste in place. Okay, perfect. So I've got that. In a second, I'm going to start to mask it out and refine it. So that's good. That's selection. So, okay, we can close this. Don't need to save it. And now, yep. I would do the same thing again with the marquee tool. Shortcut M, make a selection on this plate right here. Uh, Command C or edit copy. And again, I'm going to paste in place. Okay, perfect. So now you'll see that I have the two additional layers here. So I'm just going to rename them so I know which one is which. I'm going to say this is uh, the head. And then this is the body, the plate, body plate. Okay, I'm just going to reorder my layers by clicking and dragging. Just makes it a little easier for me. And then I'm going to press Command S to save. Now I want to zoom in. Maybe we can start. And again, you can start with either one. Uh, I'm going to start, let's say, with the head. So I'm going to turn off my body plate layer. I'm going to zoom in by pressing Command and then... I'm on a Mac, so it's going to be a command. If you're on a PC, it'll be a control, and then plus to zoom in, minus to zoom out. Okay. Just going to take a look at it, see if there's any imperfections or any elements I want to fix beforehand. So, yeah, I just want to fix a couple of these right here. They're pretty minor. And again, completely up to you if you want to fix them. So, shortcut J is the patch tool. Uh, I'm going to make a selection and I'm just going to drag away from it. There we go. And then command D, control D to deselect it. I'm going to do that again. And there we go. If this patch tool doesn't default for you, you know, you just click on your tool options. And then uh, once you click, you'll, you'll have different options here. You'll see, and I've just selected patch tool. Once you select it once there, uh, anytime you press a shortcut J, it'll be good to go. Okay. So now with that, I'm going to go down to here to make a mask. With the mask tool, I want to click on B for my shortcut, which is just my brush. 
I'll want to keep my color options, so black on top, white on bottom. And the way that this mask works is that if you paint over with black, it'll make the element disappear. But it's not deleting it. So let's say I, I went too far and like, oh no, I started deleting part of the helmet. Well, really easy. Toggle on your white and you can bring that back. So what I'm going to start to do now is just start cleaning this image up so you don't see this like layering, right? I want that like a smoother transition. I'll do this. And maybe at this point, I'll, I'll speed this part of the process up so we can just see the final result. Okay, so I've finished the head. So now when I turn off and turn on that layer, you're able to see the update. And it's pretty good. Now I want to do the same for the body plate. So again, I'm going to select that layer. I'm going to click down here where it says layer mask. Making sure that the layer mask is on there. Press B for shortcut for my brush. Need to make sure that it's set to black. So I'm going to press shortcut X. And now with the brackets, you can make that smaller or larger. And I'm going to do the same process here. I'll be cleaning up the layer on top. So give me a couple minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got all our layers here. So there we go. There's the body plate. And there's the head. I've kept some of the shadows. And I think it looks pretty good for what I'm trying to accomplish. At this point, you know, you can just export this image and, and you'd be done. Um, but I'm going to make a couple of final tweaks. I'm going to change the canvas size. Change this to 16. So you... Oh, Again, you can go to image, canvas size, and I want the width to be the same as the height. There we go. I've got a squared image, and it's pretty good. Uh, I think I'd be pretty happy to export this. Actually, let me take that back. There's some elements that I really want to clean up here from pads. So I'm going to select the patch tool. So that's command J. I mean, sorry, that's just J shortcut. I'm going to make a selection. I'm going to drag an element that I wanted to use to fill that in. That's pretty good. This might be a little tough. Might have to also go in with the clone tool to fix this one here. Yeah. Press S. You can also go right here. So click clone stamp. I'm going to hold down alt, click a reference point. And so now when I click in, let's fill that in just a tiny bit. There you go. So it's just got a little bit of feathering going in there. And this element might be a little tricky, but let's see if I can also get rid of this. Again, I'm going to go in with the clone step and just kind of fill in what I don't like. Actually, there's one more. I think this is on the breastplate, on the chest plate here, or torso plate. 
just kind of get rid of that. I'm just using the clone stamp to clone that out. And you can zoom in, see if there's any elements or things that are bothering you. And either with the clone tool, whoops, make sure you've got your proper layer selected. And just kind of clean it up a tiny bit. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the circle too. It's not bad. I mean, I don't want it's not a deformed circle or anything. I'm okay with this black one here at the bottom. Or am I? Sorry, take it back. I'm not okay with them. Okay. Yeah. I guess while we're added and cleaning things up, maybe this square here can also go. Oh, again, maybe use my clone stamp to kind of fill that in, fill in those gaps. Now, I think we're good. There's some reflection on the shoulder pads here. And again, it'd be up to you. I think for my purposes, this is fantastic. Uh, this is exactly what I need. So now I can take a look at this. I can see it. I can talk to my friends and um, collaborators and see if this is something we want to continue with. If this is you know, the right direction, we can also tweak this. But at least this gives us a really good starting point. And it took just a handful of minutes to clean everything up. Leonardo really saved us time. And it's a really quick way to get that sketch and turn it into a rough, uh, not prototype, but a rough mock-up 3D render that uh, you can use to evaluate and if you want to move forward with your projects or not. So I hope this saves you a lot of time. Till next time.